You made it through your first 30 minutes. The next five minutes, we are going to spend together word smithing your answer target. That little paragraph at the top, we're going to dedicate five minutes where you don't think about anything else. Now there's a list of things that I do to make sure that my answer targets are perfect. So I'm going to walk you through, you're gonna pick my brain a little bit to figure out what you can do to make your answer targets the best they can be. So the first thing that I will do when I'm going through my answer target is I'm going to read it out loud. I'm going to look at the title, I'm going to see what question it asks, and then I'm going to read my answer target out loud to see if I answer the question in the first five words. If your answer target doesn't answer the question in the first five to 10 words, then you should probably reorganize your answer target so that the answer comes directly first. Here's an example of that. For an article, um, do fish sleep upside down? Um, I could say, my answer target could look like this, and this is a poor example. Uh, while many fish have different sleeping habits, um, most fish sleep upside down. So you can recognize in that answer target that I just came up with, um, I didn't give the actual answer until the very last portion of the sentence. I said most fish sleep upside down. So, and I, I have really have no idea about fish. This is just an example. <laughs> um, so rather than saying that and giving kind of a caveat at the beginning, I would want my answer target to say, so for the title is, do fish sleep upside down? My answer target should be, most fish sleep upside down, maybe period or comma. Uh, many fish have different sleeping habits um, that vary based on size uh, or type of water they're in. So you can see, while it's not a perfect example, you can see that there's a difference between putting the answer somewhere in the first sentence to putting it right at the front of the sentence. We understand that for most questions, the answer will be, it depends, or there will be you know, some variance in the answer. And that's okay, but we want to give a specific answer right at the beginning. And then you can follow up with your remaining space in your paragraph with any of the caveats um, that come with the answer. So make sure that your answer is spit out right in the very first sentence. The next thing that you want to make sure, a couple formatting things, your answer target should be right at 300 characters. Probably no less than 150 characters and definitely no more than 300 to 325 characters. Um, that way your whole answer target will show on the Google search engine ranking page. Uh, something else that you need to make sure is that your answer target sounds like an encyclopedia, more kind of like a definition style paragraph. Uh, it's going to sound like it comes out of a textbook and you really want that to be the way you write because Google will link that type of language and that sort of format with authority. And so by making your uh, answer target sound authoritative, Google will see it as authoritative and so will the people who read your post. Um, another thing that you need to make sure is never put a yes or a no in the answer target. So back to the fish example, do fish sleep upside down? I shouldn't say yes, most fish sleep upside down. Or I shouldn't say no, most fish do sleep upside down. I shouldn't keep the yes or no out of it because depending on how the searcher asks the question on the Google search page, um, it will maybe make not as much sense or it could end up giving an incorrect answer. So keep yes or no out of it. Now I'm kind of like a ninja tip that I found with our writers at, the, at our writing studio. I look through hundreds and hundreds of blog posts a week and I see a lot of writers make the same mistake. And that mistake is that they just don't spit out the answer. You read your answer target after you've done most of the reworking and the wordsmithing and make sure that your answer is perfect. A lot of times I see with our writers that the last sentence or the last portion of their answer target is the direct answer, but they've put the caveats at the top of the answer target. And so a lot of times I'll have them swap the last part of the answer target to the top. Now only do that if the last part of the answer target is more relevant, but that's something that I see all the time. So it's definitely something to look out for. All right, now go take the time, take all of these steps with your answer target, look at the post recipe, 
um, page that you have and make sure that your answer target fits all of these specifications. Now, as you go on writing different types of posts, we're gonna have a full answer target course for you. Um, but for now, this is all you need to know. Uh, go work on your answer target for the next five minutes. Set a timer for yourself, and then you'll be ready to move on to the next part in the post.